and that is just the nature of Jewfish on soft plastics off the beach for me anyways. But we've actually got one this morning, so I'm gonna show that footage a little bit later, but first we'll roll the intro, then I'll talk about the gutter selection, talk about the technique, and then I'll show if this Jewy to you. We've fished a few gutters, fished this one earlier, and then we've come back to it because it just looks so promising. So what I like about it is we've got nice open ends to it. It's not too long and it's not too wide. Ideally, I want to be able to reach the back of the sandbank where that drop off is with the lure. And I've just found that the narrower the gutter becomes, as long as it's got nice open wide ends to it if it has a nice little narrow bit where we're fishing here it's where the fish are likely to pass you and see your bait as well as so i really do think that's where they like to sit when they're um, hunting fish as well so if you spot a gutter like this what you'll kind of notice is down that end of it there's going to be sweep rolling that way out through that that rip and then there's going to be sweep rolling this way out through that rip this is all dependent on the swell direction and all that sometimes it's just ripping through one way but if you can find a gutter where there's a bit of a um, low pressure point in the middle of it, that's what I'm looking for, for sure. And as with the other beach dew that are caught, focusing on the tides. So we are about smack bang on low tide. And look, I've got most of my dew within, off the beach within half the hour of low tide. So high tide and low tide doesn't matter as long as the um, gutter looks something like this. Rightio, I'll put the chest mount on and um, go through the, the gear and the technique and then I'll show off this dew. Rightio, so I've talked about the gutter. We'll go through the gear real quick. So 12 foot, 20 to 40 pound rod, right three to six ounces. Got that with a pen. It's a, a, a spin fisher in the long cast, which just means it's a longer spool. Look, you don't need it, it's a bit overkill. But they do help with your um, looking to cast long distance with baits and lures. So that's a 7,500 pen spin fisher. I've got 40 pound braid and then about a good two and a half meters. Here's my joining knot here. Two and a half meters of um, 50 pound fluorocarbon. And that's down to one of the um, Berkeley ripple shads. And that's a six inch. These ones come with a little treble underneath. You'll just see the hole there where I've snipped him off. And look, I haven't had the experience myself, but I have had it, heard it a few times that if you have the treble off hanging underneath and you hook up a Jew, the power of their mouths opening it up is gonna either bend this or bend this and then they'll end up getting off. So I've chosen to snip that off. I have had Jews open up gangs on me, so I do believe it. So there we go, one of the six inch ripple shads. These are about, what, 11 bucks, 10 bucks a pop. You can get a pack of the just um, six inch Berkeley, oh, I forget the name, I'll put it on the screen here. And they're pack of three for about, yeah, 12 bucks or something like that. They all do the damage. These just have a bit more detail in them and shit like that. There you go, there is the setup. And I'll just run through the technique. So yeah, I'm just focusing. I work the whole gutter, but really the point I'll put in a lot of focus on 
is kind of the middle of the gutter or its narrowest point and that's where there's going to be a low pressure point where there's not much sweep running left or right and I, I do believe that's where the Jew hang out waiting for a feed. So, poke it out there and I'm not really letting it sink to the bottom or anything like that, I'm just winding up the slack and then what I'm doing is a sweep to the side and then winding in straight and just sweeping to the side constantly like that. So it's really similar to a bit like a flatty hop, but all I'm doing is sweeping it to the side, winding in the slack, and I'm not waiting for it to hit the bottom or anything like that. All I wanna do is get that tail fluttering and then giving that, that soft plastic to pause and letting it sink slowly. And what you'll find is that the fish will hit it on that pause. And I will just say, this is just the technique that's worked for me. A lot of people rate the slow roll and all these different kinds of things. But this is just the way that I like to fish them. It's given me results, so... I'll certainly change up the retrieve if I'm not having any results as well. But all it's going to be is a sweep to the side, wind up the slack. Definitely don't put your rod forward and then wind up the slack because you want to have constant contact with that lure because they're going to hit it on that pause and it, it might be a little tick in the line or it might be a great big wallop but you just want to be able to feel it even is, if it is very small. And just all the way back to the gutter or the, the front of the gutter here. And that's it. That's what's done the damage on this Dewey and I reckon I'll roll the footage right now. Yeah, you got to jam them. Just initially and then spot them. There we go. Got it? Okay, there he is! Fuck yes! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Want me to film you? Up there? Yeah, why not? Here we go. He's only a pup. Yeah, yeah. He's only a pup. But he should be a Jew. I don't think it's a salmon. If it's a salmon, it's a chunky dog. Is it on? Yeah, yeah. Is it a Jew? Yeah, that's got to be a Wait. small. That's got to be a small right, Jew, Lewis. Over here, the sweet's going that way. That way, the sweet's going that way. Is your head shaking or is it salmon? No, I think it's a Jew. Oh, oh, mate, you did it. You did it. <laughs> yeah, she's a Jewy. I'll get him. Hang on, I'll just film it. It's not easy to do, bro. Yeah. Awesome Look fish, man. Tail. Hey, Good that chair. paddle tail. Scoffed. That paddle tail is absolutely yeah. gone. Cracker. Alright, that's out. I reckon he's like 85. Yeah, maybe. He's not a monster, but he, geez, he's a good, good um. Oh, he's in good nick, man. Yeah. Very good condition. Oh, it's on the nose. 87. Feel that mentally. Let's get him in. Tell him around this 
Orange Bay there. Oh, we're in South Africa, mate. <laughs> It's like we're in South Africa. Is this waterproof? Yeah, there he goes. Woo! <laughs> nice. So there we go, nice little dewy off the beach. You can tell I'm pretty stoked because they're not an easy fish to catch. If you're just looking to get into it, you can expect to have donut after donut after donut session. But persevere, you will be rewarded and they're just an awesome fish to catch. Absolutely love them. Anyways, just thought I'd show off a few of the lure selections. So this is one we obviously got that one on, which is six inch ripple shad. A white is probably my go-to color for day and night. And yes, you can catch jewies on soft plastics off the beach at night. Um, and this is one of the, it's a Berkeley as well. It's just one of the cheaper, um, you get a pack of three for about 11 bucks or so. And look, there's not much difference between them except um, a little bit of detail around them. These ripples here on the body are supposed to displace a little bit more water, um, as well as these are just slightly heavier, which is going to allow you to pelt them out a little bit further. But these um, these uh, three packs do the damage. I've actually got my PB on this one right here in the pearl white, and they're not as heartbreaking when a tailor comes up and snips the tail off it. You can also make up your own soft plastics. So here's a Kytec swing impact in six inch. And of course, benefit of that is you can adjust the weight to suit your rod or the conditions, but um, a one ounce jig head is a good place to start. I think these are, I'll put on the screen now. They're over an ounce, but um, yeah, about one ounce for a jig head's a good place to start. Look, I kind of go with natural colors. I haven't really experimented that much with bright bright or anything that's about as experimental as I'll go and I think really with the soft plastic they've got that huge lateral line so it's more the paddle that um that paddle tail and the motion of the the lure that's going to bring them in and I think just a natural natural bait's going to get them to bite once they find it so yeah very cool way to catch them a couple things that can improve your chances which I've already gone over but I really just focus on the tides I'll fish for about an hour, half hour before, half hour after. And in that time, I'll try and hit, I can hit up to about four or five gutters, depending how long they are and depending on how many casts I want to put in each. But focus on the tide, run and gun, find the fish. And yeah, you will be rewarded eventually. So if you do get onto your first dewey with this technique, let me know, because I'll be absolutely stoked as well as any comments or anything like that. Put them down below and I'll get back to you. Lastly, I just wanted to give a shout out to Dave, who was behind the camera, who has his own YouTube channel, Ozfish. Has great content. He's a um, bit of a master at getting jewies in uh, Newey Harbour. So if you've got a boat and into um, chase him in there on bait, check him out. No worries. Radio guys, I'll catch you next time.